Hi, I'm Keith Deason. Today we're going to make a secret wood sword. Or an epoxy river sword. Or a big green weird thing. Or as my kids like to call it, can you please move that? We're trying to watch cartoons. So a long time ago, a woman who grew up in my house went to England as a young girl and got a bunch of acorns and somehow smuggled them back into America. Planted a bunch of trees and those trees grew into English brown oak trees on my property. Well, to make a long story short, one of those trees became worm food, and that worm food is now this nice quarter sawn plank with this crotch figuring in it. And my bandsaw, by the way, is not the best. I still got a lot of tuning up and restoration to do on it, but it works. So you can hold that comment right now about how much my bandsaw sucks. I know. Let's try a jigsaw for the rest of this project. And the sawing part is done. And it's time to shape the handle with my favorite draw knife. And I'm going to let you listen to this for a second because there should be more ASMR videos that are just draw knife work. I swear I could fill a whole channel with this and I'd be a millionaire. Now the thing you're going to realize about this mold that I make is that it's really, really crappy. I used packing tape because I knew the epoxy wouldn't stick to the shiny side of it. Oh, by the way, this sword is also made out of two-part epoxy. And I can't afford an epoxy tint, especially when the epoxy was free. So I channeled Peter Brown and crushed up this colored pencil lead, and that worked out pretty great. And this uh, piece of sidewalk chalk, which turned out pretty fluorescent, and that was pretty cool. Crush it up and start mixing the epoxy, which... I've noticed that if you spin the epoxy while you're pouring it, it uh, it does very little, if nothing at all, for the mixture, but it looks cool while you're doing it. I put a little paint in that one, dumped in some pencil lead in this one. Now the bread and butter of any epoxy video is going to come in three parts. This is what I like to call the appetizer, where you start to see the epoxy coloring take shape and there's a lot of mixing and it's all very magical and satisfying and my ad hoc tints actually turned out really good this one is just a couple of drops of olive green acrylic paint it's got a nice translucency to it and this one i believe was tinted with the chalk and you have to have this shot because look how good that looks all right this is the one that was the brighter green acrylic paint with a few drops in there it makes a nice base here comes the chalk it's much more translucent and the point of all these different colors is not to get them to mix or blend, I want them to swirl around each other and give this a natural kind of gem look. And apparently I decided that I was going to get it right on top of the wood there. This is the olive and some more of uh, this one, which looks like the neon green again. But look how cool that looks all, all twirled in there. That's fancy. See, and there's that swirl I was talking about, just, you know, letting it fall where it falls, where it goes. And this... In case you haven't noticed is the main course of the epoxy video this is where you just dump the epoxy into the mold in such a satisfying way it's like you're trying to shovel donuts into that void where your soul used to be and more swirling this time with a palette knife probably just to justify having a palette knife and you got to use a torch to pop all the bubbles and it doesn't look like I'm doing much because you're keeping it far away from the surface but you can see here torch Meet bubbles, bye bye bubbles. And bye bye also unfortunately to the structural integrity of the tape. The thick pour of epoxy had absorbed a lot of the heat from that torch and is also giving off its own heat in an exothermic reaction while it cures. So I convinced myself it was a small leak, put up a couple extra barriers, and took to admiring the job I did swirling the different pigments of epoxy. Look at that. Not thinking about a leak now, are you? Me neither. Unfortunately, like the conductor of a terrible, terrible orchestra, we must all eventually face the music. You see the tape underneath the part of the mold where it was not supposed to be touching the glass uh, completely disintegrated in parts, and because epoxy is exactly what it is, the whole thing bonded to the glass underneath. And why did I put it all on top of glass? Because I'm an idiot, folks. Because I'm an idiot. However, Idiots do have more fun. 
And after I remove the glass with my very specialized glass removal tool, pry the mold apart, and manage to work through every childhood Christmas where I did not receive a Nintendo, it was time to show my bandsaw why I was unceremoniously yanked from retirement and put into my shop. Ah, oh, listen to that baby purr. So the general shaping of the blade went something like this. I cut the shape on the bandsaw here and there, put some angles on it, got that nice round tip going. Alright, now I swear this isn't me just trying to hit that magical 10 minute mark on a YouTube video where they can cram three commercials into it. I really enjoyed the shaping of this thing and watching how it came together, especially on the sander, which I lost all the footage of. So I made a mold for the hilt out of that stuff you can see there, and I'm pouring two different pigments of epoxy into it because I wanted a gradient effect from light to dark as it got closer to the wood. So guys, I have a confession to make. Earlier when I said I lost the footage of uh, me sanding the piece, I didn't really lose it. Uh, I did that thing where you hit the record button one time and it doesn't record, and then you don't realize that it's not recording. And so you hit the record button again to stop it, and then you're actually recording. So that little piece of footage was all I had that even had the sander in it. The rest of it was just the back of my big old head. Oh, and I used files to make gem-like facets in the epoxy. And I didn't have a plastic polishing kit or a plastic polish, so I went to the automotive zone and got headlight polishing kits. And man, did they polish this thing smooth. Really, really nicely smooth, but not very clear. This is what it looked like afterwards, and it looks pretty sweet, doesn't it? Well, that's because it's backlit, and we'll get to that later. Because it's time for some leather working. Although, let's call this what it is, I'm wrapping a strip of leather around a piece of wood and gluing it in place. And if you want to do the same, use some super glue, it works great. And by now I know that you know that I know that you've noticed that there is no pommel on the bottom of this sword. We will get to that uh, because I realized that at about this step also. Now this is what I meant when I said that it was a little cloudy before. Uh, the thing looks great. Really in general it looks fantastic. But you can see it's not exactly clear. It's a little bit weirdly matte. Luckily I know how to fix that. You just put a little more epoxy on top, a nice thin coat spread evenly, and it clears the whole thing right up. So if you haven't noticed by now, my inspiration for this project comes from those secret wood rings where you kind of break a piece of wood and then you put some epoxy on top of it and you shape it into a ring. Well, I thought, wouldn't that be cool if it was a sword and not a ring, because swords are cool. And rings are okay, I guess. I don't know. My mom likes them. Sonic the Hedgehog seems to think they're super cool. Hey, hey, would you look at that crotch grain? That is fantastic looking. If you thought my bandsaw was in bad shape, my drill bits and my drill press are worse. Okay, and after the holes drilled through, we give it a general shape over here on the bandsaw. Which looks really cool with those machine marks on it at this angle with the light. I like this shot a lot. And this time at the sander, I nailed it. I pushed record, and it recorded, and I checked to make sure it was recording. Oh, and uh, also I sanded the project thing. See? And that's where it goes. It measures nice, it looks pretty okay. I wanted it to be kind of organic, so I didn't do any real measurements. I just kind of cut it and shaped it on the fly. And it's going to be held in by this dowel. Oh, and glue. The glue helps. So I mix up some epoxy pigmented with both chalk and colored pencil lead to pour as the jewel in the pommel. And you can see one of my original shape ideas for the hilt on this piece of plastic that I'm pouring over. And a little torchy torchy pop pop. Cut to the next day when it's ready to be installed. And we get it in there, nicey nice, and we forgot to glue, so do we glue it? We get it in there, nicey nice, any day now. Yep, yeah, sure, make sure it's clean. 
There we go. And I hope you saved room because here comes the dessert. The beauty shots. And let me be serious here for a minute. I really do love the way this came out. It glows in the right light. Just look at this thing. That is tinted with stuff you can find at the dollar store. You can see the veins of that darker pigment running through naturally down the core of the blade. I'm going to level with you. I don't get sent stuff, ever. Uh, Total Boat sent me this box of epoxy, and I hope I did it justice. I didn't even know what I was going to make until the box arrived. So shout out to Total Boat for sending me some epoxy and letting me make this thing. The uh, requisite discount code I'm going to flash on the screen here, and it's also going to be down in the description if you want to get your own epoxy, make your own weird sword, and, you know, enjoy life. So subscribe if you liked it, and like it if you love it, and you know how this goes. Later, makers.